All right, family. What's up, family? How is everybody doing today? Well, yes, I got a new setup for Christmas. You know, I got my little lighting on. You know, I got a little lighting set. Just holds my phone, too. So, yeah. Let's get into today's video. So, today's video is going to be about Dr. Claude Anderson and his recent interview with The Breakfast Club and how I feel about the whole situation. Let's get started by seeing what Dr. Claude Anderson, who Dr. Claude Anderson is. There's his image right there, and that's Dr. Claude Anderson. He is a, an economist, and he used to work in government, too. Y'all didn't know that, but now you do. He used to work in government. He wrote three books. He is a very intelligent man, and he was on The Breakfast Club. And I think this was one of the most beautiful interviews The Breakfast Club has done in a long time. The other one was probably with Dr. Umar Johnson, and then other... other so not necessarily celebrities, but activists and intellectuals in regards to that. And there's been many people on the Breakfast Club that have been extremely intelligent and outstanding individuals. But this guy is just unbelievable, man. Like every time I, I listen to Dr. Hunter, I'm just like, my goodness, I love I love this man. You know, not in like a weird way, but just like I admire him. He's a true elder. I respect him. And even though I don't agree with everything that he says, and it's okay not to agree with everything. He's spawn, he knows how to how to put in that work, he knows what to do, what not to do. And it's just beautiful, man. I'm always happy. And y'all need to just see just watch. I'll put a little clip of the video. Just a little clip of it. And y'all be like, damn. That's amazing, you know. I don't want to. Right, no, no, better yet, I won't even do that. I'll put the whole, the whole interview. In in the description box. How about that? Because I know y'all love the whole thing. Y'all don't want this same section. But he was saying something that was partic. I love particularly. He was talking about when he was working in South Carolina, and he was working in in. I believe it's public policy. If if I'm if I'm mistaken, so, something in public policy or. So, oh, no, no, it was a pro property ownership, property ownership, public public property ownership in regards to lend, lending out property to, to people. So, somewhere around that line. Correct me if I'm wrong, everyone. He's talking about how he was working with, and he saw one day he was talking with Strom Thurmond. If y'all don't know Strom Thurmond, he's a rabid white supremacist. This man is brutally evil and Ironically, he busted a fat ass nut in in his maid, and then he created a biracial baby, even though he hates black people. Interesting, when he was fifteen, and he was, and she was like thirty. They most hated, most imitated. I suppose they they only want to use us for sexual pleasures. Yeah. Racist, that's what a racist does. Interesting. They will hate you all day, but then they'll they'll come come to you during during bedtime to you know get that pleasure. That's amazing. That explains racism in a nutshell. <laughs> America, in the whole world, that's amazing. Especially America. My main point at this moment was to tell people that he was able to make a deal with Strom Thurmond using <laughs> anyway, his so intelligence. I love, I love the whole thing, man. You know, I, overall, like I'm, I'm happy. You know, I don't, I really don't like the hate that other people are doing, like hateful kinds of these. Oh, he ain't shit. He ain't this. He ain't that. Come on, man. Like y'all never happy, man. This guy is the most positive person I've ever seen, man. And he's willing to to help. Like he's 85 years old. He's done a lot. Okay, and. And I love, I love all organizations. You know, I support everyone. But I'm really happy about what he's doing, and I would, I wouldn't even mind like putting him on one of my shows, and we can talk and talk about different ideas and stuff. And it's really good, man. I stand with Dr. Claude Anderson, you know, and I really do hope that other organizations try to imitate his ideas because his ideas are. Are beautiful, especially in the black community, man. They're, they're beautiful, you know. It's all about helping each other out economically, building the community. And people say, "Well, the, the community, well, 
Well, that's just the neighborhoods. No, they're definitely neighborhoods and communities. Neighbor, communities want ownership and control. If you don't, if you don't own anything, that's not a community, bro. That's just a, that's just a neighborhood. That's a, you're just a residential person. It's a residential area. It ain't no damn community. That's why I don't like you say, "Oh well, oh well, this place the majority, this and ethnicity." Well, yeah. Do you own and control some as some business at all? No. Other groups are controlled. Why can't ooh, so? In order for that to do that, you have to own and control me, okay? Because if you don't own anything, you are through in the United States and the world. And that's true. And he did say something that was true. He said, black Americans have been here before 90, before 98% of the people have been in America. That's true. That's true. Can't get mad at that. And there's been some... So-called black Americans that have been coming that have been here before 1619. Let's keep it the buck. Let's be honest. And also, maybe some of the so-called black Americans are Native Americans too. Because what they did during slavery was that there were Native Americans who were the same complexion as African Americans. Same hair texture, everything. Maybe some of them took them from other parts of the the country made a deep south and put them in the plantations in the deep south. That could be another thing too. And also, they brought brought the slaves from West Africa to come as well during sixteen nineteen, and after that too until eighteen oh eight. And then the international, the international clause, your know, constitutional clause, whatever that banned international slavery, but then banned domestic slavery. And also, too, there there are maybe some Native Americans who are supposedly Africans, but they, they didn't know that because, and no, I'm not trying to say that Africans were Native, are Native to America. No, no, I'm not trying to say that, but a lot of straight, some straight-haired Africans were put into the same category as straight-haired Native Americans. And some so-called kinky-haired or my, my, my hair texture, people with my texture, were put into to the slave plantations and were put into the same category even though they were Native American, not African. So it is, there could be some mismatch and stuff like that. It happens all the time. Like I said, Africans and the Amerindians, the natives of this continent and also the natives of Africa and the Pacific Islands, we're all, di we're all the diverse people. We're not a monolith. We don't look all the same, you know? We, we have the same ancestry, yes. Per each continent, for example, yes, Africans, Africans have or, the African ancestry. Indian Natives of America Island. have Native American ancestry, no, we, et cetera. That, those are the Not most, everyone has the, the same ancestry. The Just keeping it up in the world. My bad North about America, the misconception. America, and the Oceania. Everybody looks different, you know? You have East Africans that look like me. Not all. You have East Africans that are light-skinned, like Nipsey Hussle. Well, he's half African-American as well. But but still, there's there's light skinned blacks like him. There's also let me see who else. There's very dark dark like really dark Ethiopians, East Africans from any any ethnicity, you know, from Amaras to Oromos to Somalis to to even there's even dark skinned Yemenis living in Ethiopia. Not a whole lot, but there's a few that were well obviously because Ethiopia. Had a huge, it was a larger country back then. It encompassed also Somali, parts of Somalia, Djibouti, some parts of Yemen, Sudan, I think up to the Chad too. Anyways, there's very dark skinned Ethiopians, darker than me, darker than the Akon. There's light skinned Senegalese like Akon. There's light skinned Liberian. So it's just very ignorant to do that. And I like how he said that too, because they've been here more than any other group. And they should be, them and Native Americans. Who are native to this to this country should be should have some rights and some claim to this country, and I absolutely agree with that. And people say, "Well, you're an African. Well, you shouldn't. Well, you shouldn't be supporting this and that." Well, yes, I'm a to African, some degree. Yes, yes, indeed, I, I am. Believe in empowerment of each nation too. If one nation struggles, we all struggle. So we should, or one community struggles. Yes, so we should all care about Africa. Yes, but we should also care about. America to uh, blacks living in America, and also trying to create ally alliances so we can all, so we can help one one person out, and they'll help us out at the end. Because the thing is, 
it, love has to be re reciprocated, you know, and that's with any community. And that's what I mean, community building. Okay, and you, then you go as a community and then you demand something from the politicians. You put your money together. And I agree with him. You lobby. Every group lobbies. Whites lobby. The, the, the so-called Jews lobby. And we can't lobby? Are you shitting me? Are you, are you serious? We can lobby, fam. We, we finna, we finna lobby this year. That's what we finna do. And for all the politicians that don't want to do anything for us, Throw them away. That's what he said. I don't see anything wrong with that. And I actually agree with a lot of stuff. He said, well, you're not part of Dr. You don't support. You're not a Dr. Claude Anderson fanatic or something. I'm like, well, okay, I don't have to be a fanatic. But I just, damn, I just, shit. It's just common sense. Shit. I mean, I agree with people, a lot of people that have common sense. Y'all make it as a big, big ass deal or something. You know? And maybe some of the organizations I associate with. We do agree with some of the things. We might be a little different on some things, but it's whatever, you know? Anyway, so I don't want to keep this video too long because, you know, it's going to be it's 11 minutes. I ain't trying to do this in 11 minutes. Anyways, family, so y'all have a blessed day. Y'all have a good one. And let me know how the setup looks like, okay? So I'm going to bounce out. Y'all have a good one. Peace and have a blessed day. Bye. I can't remember the town in North Carolina, but we don't hear about that. They were literally those communities all over the country. That's right. Well, Sweet Auburn and, and Atlanta, Georgia, every, that's had all the big hotels, fine restaurants and everything. In North Carolina, what you're talking about now, say, I grew up in Winston Salem, North Carolina. Let me use that as an example. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Winston Salem, North Carolina. And uh, we, did, we weren't looking for any social integration. You know why? Because we had our own businesses there. We had our own businesses. I had to be in. My family was part of one that had the only black bus line in the entire United States. The only black bus line. And I said we had a bus line. I'm not talking about two or three buses. We had over 500 buses. Wow. In Winston Salem, North Carolina. And guess what? We. Uh oh my God, family. That was such a beautiful mini clip of Dr. Claude Anderson speaking. And this is how he speaks on the regular. That's beautiful. Anyways, fam, so before I conclude this video, I want to give a quick shout out to Cantu Shea Butter, the leave-in condition. That was what I was using for my hair. So that's why, like, the, the curls are all looking nice and stuff. So that's what I've been using. People ask, well, what do you use for your hair and stuff? This is what I use, Cantu Shea Butter. Nothing too special, you know. I might need to use more, though, because to make my hair look nicer. But anyways... My bad about the the well groomingness of the video. But yeah, that's all family. Y'all have a blessed day. God bless y'all and have a good one. Bye.